Hello mate and welcome to another exciting video. In this video we're going to talk about potentially creating a visual novel in Unity. Before I get started a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon that really helps me out and an even bigger thank you to members and patrons your names will be running across the screen at the end of the video. So I've started a simple 2D Unity project there's no need to go into 3D for this video and all we're going to do is create a new folder in our assets folder called scripts and then inside scripts what I think I will do is create a new folder and I'm gonna know that's the wrong thing entirely let's just undo that create a new folder and I'll just call this core this is just where we're gonna put like our core classes and stuff and starting with something like this it's always difficult to decide where exactly to begin. So I'm just going to start with something really simple. We're going to start with a character class. Like so there we go. So now we've got our class created. What we do is double click on that. And then our script editor, whichever script editor you are using, will run. Happy days. Now that we've got our script up, what we're going to do first is delete all of the stuff inside our class. And we're actually going to get rid of the line that says mono behavior as well. We just want public class character. Now that we're inside our class, what we're going to do is give it some properties. We're going to go public, static, and the first thing we're going to give it is a string. And that's going to be, yeah, we'll call this short name, like so. And then we'll go with a public static string and we'll call this one full name we're also going to give this a uh, class a color and we'll call it simply color and then we'll also come up with another string and we'll call this one side image like so Okay, so those are the properties that we're going to give our character. We could come up with a whole bunch of other ones, but we'll keep this nice and simple. What I'm doing is likening our character class here kind of to what you would do in RemPy. So now that we've done that, we need to actually create a constructor for our class, i.e. we've given it properties, but we haven't told Unity what to do once we create a character. At the moment, it's just got it's got no code to handle any for any functionality so that's what we need to do now what we need to do now is create our constructor so what we're going to do is create a public and we're going to character this is our constructor so don't worry about the fact that we're declaring public character twice and then we have to actually put in some properties the first property is going to be a string and it's going to be our short name um, to make things easier, I'm going to call this short name input. I'm going to have another string called full name input. The next one is going to be a color. And we'll call that um, color input. And then we have another string, which is our side image input. These are temporary variables, so don't get too bogged down with what's going on here when I instantiate this class I'm going to put four properties in between the brackets those four properties are going to be fed into our class constructor i.e this bit of code and it's going to temporary temporarily it's going to assign them the names of short name input full name input color input and side image input what I need to do now is tell unity that those four properties correspond to these four properties here the actual properties of the class itself so what we're going to say is this dot short name equals short name input so now what i've told unity is that the short name property of the class is equivalent to whatever we've sent in via this temporary variable here and we're going to repeat the process for Oh, that's annoying. Don't do that. Full name input equals. Oh, we nearly did that wrong. 
this full name equals full name input. This dot color equals color input. And this dot side image equals side image input, like so. So that is the bare bones functionality. What we've told Unity is to, we're gonna give it four properties. So we're gonna create a new character and we're gonna assign four properties within the brackets. So in pseudo code, it would be something like um, Dave equals new character. And then inside the brackets, we would give him a short name, which would be Dave. Long name would be David. His color could be red and his side image would be dave.jpg, something like that, okay? This is pseudo code, so don't actually try and use it because it won't work, you'll just get a lot of errors. But essentially, that's what we're trying to do. We're making it as easy as possible for us to create characters further down the line because programming is a modular process. You want to make things as easy as you, as you possibly can with everything that you create to reduce the additional repetition of code. Speaking of the repetition of code, what we have to do now is copy this constructor and create another version of it. This time, we're just going to go for when we input only two properties. So we're going to have to give it a default color, which we're going to go with color.white. And side image input, we are just going to assign to null. Nice and easy. So if we only instantiate our character class with two properties, the two names, we still get a functioning constructor. And then the last one, I'm just going to remove the side image because we might want to instantiate our class without assigning a side image, but we still want a color. So we now have to say uh, null on that one as well. We'll make sure we save our code, otherwise it's all going to go hideously peaked on and I think what we're going to do as well is let's remove these static statements because that's actually causing us an error we don't need it right there because we're not going to call for those properties they belong to this class so that's going to work just fine happy days okay so the next thing I want to do is just uh, do a couple of things first thing I want to do is create a exception so if the player inputs a name and it doesn't fit a certain rule well for in, in instance in this case if the player put feeds in null then we're going to throw an error because we don't want our player to input null values for these two things they need to have values otherwise they're going to be utterly useless to us so what we'll do is we'll say if this dot full name equals null and then we'll just create empty space there and what we could do no we're just going to create two if statements if this dot short name equals null then we're going to do that as well and then all we have to do is copy and paste this code into each one of these if and when we get as far as creating our exception that's the first thing that we have to do, which is actually a pretty easy process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this code and I'm going to jump back to Unity and we are going to create a new class or a new C sharp script. And we're going to call this one invalid property exception like so. Give it a moment to overthink. Then we're just going to double click on that. And here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all of the nonsense inside there. And we are going to change where it says mono behavior. We're going to call it an exception, like so. We also need now to say using system. And we're also going to put here serializable, like so. There we go. Now we can put in our code. So we're going to go with public invalid. Nope, that's not right. Invalid property exception. 
base. Uh, yeah, that. Don't need the space in there. Happy days. Ah, that's tabbed wrong. That's not ideal. Public invalid property exception. String message. Base message. Look at that. Unit is doing all the work for us. <laughs> Public invalid property exception. Inner exception. Base message. Inner exception. Yep. That's great. And we're going to just close that off there. And then we'll say protected. Invalid property exception. About a property exception and brackets, and we're going to go system dot runtime dot serialization dot serialization info info system dot runtime dot serialization dot streaming context context close our bracket, colon, base, info, comma, context, happy days. Right, that's mostly correct. Let me just double check that we've actually not made any silly typos. Let's just, one thing, that, paste that into there, paste that into there. Yep, there was typos there. And that is, don't worry too much about this. This is just, this is to be honest, it's a, it's a bit of a faff, but this is basically the code that we're going to use. We're going to save this to create an exception if there's a problem with our code. So we can come back to Unity, let it do its thing, and then jump back into our character class. And now what we can do is when we have an issue with our our code, i.e. if the user instantiates a character class incorrectly, we can now say throw new invalid property exception, which invalid property exception. That's probably why I was getting problems because I mistyped property. Uh, I could fix that. In fact, you know what? Mm, let's not bother. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's going to work. That's the main thing. We can, if we really want to be funny about it, we'll co go back and edit it later. We'll say full name must contain a string and then we'll just copy that, paste that into there and we'll change this to short name and then we can go ahead and do that in each one of these or we could just create a method. Should we do that? Let's do that. So public void check names and we will not have an input type because we're just going to double check our values and then all we have to do is go check names. Did I copy the whole thing? No, I did not. There we go. Control C. Now where I've put that, we just remove that and we'll paste that instead. Remembering to put a semicolon afterwards. And now we have a functioning constructor. Or in fact, we have three functioning constructors, which now also check the input of the names to make sure that they are correct. Now we could, if we wanted to, and to be honest, I would recommend that you do it, is spend a little bit of time thinking of other things which the user or you, knowing yourself, might screw up on, i.e. putting a color that isn't a color into that property or not specifying a correctly formatted string. Remember that when we're working with strings, generally speaking, we want to make sure that they are correctly formatted. So you can create a whole other bunch of, of exceptions to check against and make sure that you throw out an exception which tells the user when they've done something wrong. That's precisely what is happening here. Now, if we wanted to test this to make sure that we know it's going to work, what we have to do 
to come back into Unity and we actually have to create a, a testing script. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty object there. We're going to create a new script. That's not what I wanted to do at all. We're going to create a new script called testing like that. And then we're going to assign it to our game object. And then we're going to open up the code so that we can actually put some new stuff in. So what we can do is we can say public uh, character, character, like so. And then we can just go with static as well, just in case, public static character. And we actually need to put that in the before the start. So we'll get rid of this line of code here and replace that with that. And then we'll say, character equals new character and now we need to input our properties so we're going to give it and let's just go with e eileen we'll give her a color red just for funsies and then we'll just give her a random because we haven't actually got any files in in our in our software just yet. So all we want to do at this point is just check that instantiating the class is actually going to work. So what we can do now is go to debug.log character dot short name like so. And we could also just copy and paste that if we wanted to paste the full name there as well just to check that we have actually created our character class or an instance of our character class there like that so now when we run our code in the console what we should see is e and eileen so we know that our class has been created and that it has assigned the correct values to it and what you'll notice is that unlike most Unity games, so far we haven't filled up our hierarchy with a load of nif naf and trivia, which is kind of important in this case. So that's our character class started. Thanks ever so much for watching this, guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. We will continue with this project in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.